Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Black Nerd Talk featuring Dre Day and my lovely co-host. Bonbon 623. And today we're going to talk about what we're currently playing and what we're excited for upcoming. And the state of play was just Wednesday, so mm -hmm. that's kind of what's driving this episode. So, per usual, what are you playing? Well, okay, so... Or, in your case, because I know you watch your husband play a lot, if you're not playing, what is he, what are you watching him play? I forget the name of the game that he's playing right now. Actually. Yo, editing Bon here, so pardon my lighting. The game that my husband is playing is called Calypso... Callisto Protocol. Okay, that's like the prison game where you're in like an alien prison, which I guess it's not an alien prison after all. There's just like things in there and robots and you're trying to break out of it into freedom again. Anyway, um, he likes it, I guess. It's it's cool. It sounds very, it sounds very um, intense because he plays it downstairs in the downstairs uh, gaming area and the sound system and everything and it just sounds like a whole lot's going on you know and then the game that i'm playing which i wasn't playing that morning when we were recording and then i started playing that evening is called paradise killer now it's very like danganronpa if you've ever played that game and it's a murder mystery game so i'm an investigator and my character is named lady love dies they have such amazing names you guys so i'm playing lady love dies and apparently i was exiled because i got in trouble by the other gods right or that we're not gods we're immortals but i got in trouble right whatever and i've been exiled for 8,200 years, right? So when I come back, you know, things are a little bit different. Uh, people changed and there's some, there's been some murdering going on. So now I have to figure out who did it and why. And it's been amazing, you guys. It's been amazing. Oh my gosh, it is on PS5. I think it came out in 2020. Paradise Killer, get into it. You're not a Zelda player? No, but I hear great things about it, so I might check it out sometime. Yeah, you check out Tears of the Kingdom. That's uh, out now, and um, it's a lot, mm -hmm. and you'll be stuck in it. <laughs> <laughs> but there were some games in the, what was it called? Game of Play? State of Play. State of, yeah, play. State of play. That I was really interested in. Which it was. Do you remember them by title? I did. I wrote them oh. down. So you go ahead and say what you're playing for. Okay, so... Of course, I'm definitely playing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It's um it's like two times as big as Breath of the Wild. It's crazy because they have the the regular world and then they have like a whole separate un world that's underground and it's like they said the first Zelda was two hundred hours, so I'm like, what is this one? Four or five hundred? I heard there's yeah, a thousand yeah. like coin things or something that you can collect. Oh, oh yeah, those Korok seeds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm playing that. Um, I keep saying that I'm not gonna buy the uh the new season of Call of Duty, but I'm I'm doing <laughs> the newest season of Call of Duty or the most current one because it's about to be over, and I'm trying to finish that battle pass. So I'm playing that. I am touching. Horizons DLC, The Burning Shores. I played a little bit of it and it's pretty interesting so far, but I haven't sunk my teeth in it enough to get a full uh, grasp of what it is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those are the ones I'm currently bouncing off at the moment. But uh, let me make sure. Yeah, anything else I would turn on, I'm not necessarily focused on, but I'm I'm playing those three consistently. Gotcha. But as far as the upcoming from the state of play, we're going to start off with Metal Gear Solid Delta. And when I saw that, I was like, he is positively <laughs> screaming right now. <laughs> you know, I was really like, so they're doing that and they're doing the, um, the Master Collection, which is one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. which I already have on PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, and I'm going to buy it on PlayStation 5 just because. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the thing that I was like, super excited, but I noticed that they did not show who the developer was for Metal, Metal Gear Solid Delta. And mm -hmm. that's, I'm expecting it to be Blue Point who handles all the remakes, but I've been hearing rumors that Kojima could be collaborating. So, like, if Konami has kind of let, because uh, Kojima has his own thing with Kojima Productions, if they if they're letting Kojima work on Metal Gear Solid Three, that's when I'm going to go into my full out screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hear yeah. you screaming all the way over here. <laughs> yeah, Rhea from Texas, all the way out to uh, Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that um, that Assassin's Creed looks good. Assassin's Creed Mirage mm -hmm. as a long time, but like, because my favorite Assassin's Creed is Origins, but before that, it was Assassin's Creed 1. It really looks a lot like they're going back to the roots. It doesn't look like it's going to be a lot of open land, look like it's going to be more centralized in a town, and it looks like they got you back into stealth and operating and dealing with like the people in the community. Um, That's a day one buy for me. Got you. Assassin's Creed Mirage. And then they showed uh, Sp oh, you you know, you know, Spider Man Two is a day one buy for me. And they showed that you can bounce back and forth between Miles and 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 um and Spider Man. Mm -hmm. And then and it looks like this is the point where the symbiote has got a hold of Spider Man before it gets on the Venom. So because I watched in the trailer, I was like, yeah, Spider Man don't quite. He ain't quite as grimy as they got him in the uh, Wizard College. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. Nice. And that's that another, that has some other games that were cool, but those are the three. No, wait a minute. Alan Wake 2. That's definitely going to be a day one buy. But they're talking about releasing it digital only. And I've talked about how I'm not a fan of games only being digital. Uh -huh. But Definitely a game I'm getting. And um hold on, I had to I had to make a list just so I didn't forget nothing. Let me pull out my palm pilot. <laughs> <laughs> do, do. Oh, and the Talos Principle too. Yeah, it's a game called Talos Principle. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just had to remember how it looked. Yeah, it's like a it's a puzzle game, but it's really thought provoking. The first one it kind of plays with elements of um, like the beginning of time and what happens after death. I didn't finish it, but it's really intriguing. But I'm going to go ahead and pick up Talos Principle 2 and I'll just have it for whenever I finish the first one. But those are the five. It's actually five. Well, my heavy hitters were the three I mentioned. Alan Wake. I love Remedy. They're one of my favorite dev teams. So I would say that's that's a four hard hitters. Talos Principle is kind of like, it feels like an indie game, but it's definitely interesting. But those are the ones I'm getting for sure that they actually announced. Then, you know, they got Silent Hill 2 and Max Payne 2 coming. I don't know the dates on those, but those are definitely going to get bought too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm super excited. But I'm taking a vacation. Uh, the week of October 12th and 17th, because the 12th is the Assassin's Creed Mirage and the 17th is the uh, Alan Wake 2. So I'll be gaming that week. Got you. <laughs> what did you see that you were excited about? All right. So I chose all of the cute ones, of course. <laughs> per usual. So Sword of the Sea looks really interesting, which I guess it's from the same developers of Abzu. Which I remember seeing that on the PlayStation Store. I haven't played it. But... Is, um, I think I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Do they have like that? You know that thing that's behind you, the the with the heart. Is that picture that like that same color? The game or the you don't remember? Yeah, it was kind yeah. of well. Yeah, I know. That I chose are colorful like that. But... Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about because I've seen it in the store. I don't believe that I've bought it or played it but when you said Opsu yeah it, it reminds me of that colorway of that deal back then because mm -hmm. that's like a big but but continue what else you got then I got Neva or Neva and that's the one where it's uh 
it's kind of like a flat animation style and it's the black girl with the white hair and the white wolves and then the black goo kills her little wolf buddy oh damn I uh I just feel like I need to get my get back because of get that. Get. Just immediately, <laughs> it's not okay. I admit that. Like you I felt that. I gotta get some get back. Yeah, you, you know, gotta I'm get gonna back. get my lick back. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. um, Cat Quest looked really Cat cute. Quest. I think it was like kitties of the Caribbean or something. It just looks okay. adorable. Foam Star, which is a Square Onyx game, which it kind of like it's an online player kind of thing. Um, it almost reminds me of like um, a battle royale type of situation, but you try to whoever has the most foam, maybe. Oh no, yeah, I think I'm gonna pull. I'm about to pull mine up. Well, pull up the list because I'm like, damn, I think I just missed all of. <laughs> <laughs> and then I chose the Plucky Squire because it just looks kind of adorable. It looks up my alley. A uh, Grand Blue Fantasy, maybe. Maybe. The uh, Towers of Agabes or Agabes. Agabes. I can't remember what it looks like right now, but I liked it. So I wrote it down. And last and not least, Revenant Hill, which kind of reminds me of a game that I played called I Am Dead. It has the same type of animation. Okay. I, I was, there's a game called Martha's Dead that I've. Oh, I watched the Let's Players play it, and that, right, okay. that game is intense. Hold on, so let me see what we got here. Oh, boy, I've seen that Ghost Runners, too. That shit will be left in stores across the nation. That shit where you, it's like you got, you're a sword fighter, and it's in first person, and you can't get hit once. I played oh, that first one. Not good yeah. for me, because I, I can't do <laughs> Turn that shit off immediately. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, let me see here. Uh, Phantom Blade oh. Zero looks interesting to watch. Not necessarily oh. to play for me, but to watch. I it. Yeah, I definitely ain't playing that shit. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Because I see, I see in a uh, a cutscene where they're doing the, you know, they're both swinging and the mm -hmm. enemies matching everything you do. I say, yeah, I don't got to <laughs> I don't got no time for this shit. I'll watch somebody play it, though. Uh -huh. Oh, so did you see the PlayStation handheld? I did, and I was a little confused. So was it not kind of like a Switch situation? So or a Steam Deck? what it's looking like they're trying to... It's definitely not a Steam Deck. It looks like they're trying to do the Wii U situation, right? Yeah. So like, say for, say for instance, if there's one PS5 in the house... And let's say just just take you and your husband for instance. But I think y'all have two PS5s, right? Yeah. Okay, but if y'all just had one, let's say you were playing the Switch on the TV, and um, you were more comfortable on the TV, and you say, "Well, I want to play PlayStation." You get that device, and you can pl you can play the PlayStation on that screen without using the uh. So it it plays what's on your PlayStation. It's not. It doesn't play a game like you. It doesn't play it natively. It plays as a streaming device, so it's actually a complementary piece to the PS5 as opposed to an individual something that you can take away from home. Mm, gotcha. So it has its functions. I don't think I'm gonna get it because I don't have anybody that I'm sharing my PlayStation with. But on the flip side, well, I don't. I don't know, man. I'm a gadget head. I'll say that I'm not gonna get it and then get it just to say I got it. Like to because I'll yeah, because I'll be one day I might say, Hey, I want to watch YouTube and play the game at the same time, play a Call of Duty at the same time and just have it just to have it. Mm -hmm. But I was really excited about the earbuds. I'm like, I'm not really big on the over the ear ads headsets because my head gets so hot. Mm -hmm. But those earbuds are definitely bought. I was kind of disappointed about that. I want the handset. I want them to not handset. I want them to make a portable device, portable device that's like the PlayStation Vita or the PSP that has its own library that I can take on the go because those systems are cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I was definitely excited about that earbuds, and you know, like I said, it, it's a bittersweet thing with the. I forgot it's Q Razor. Was it? I believe it's 
some yeah PlayStation something, but yeah, excited about those. Hmm. But um, uh, I don't get very excited about games because I don't keep up with them. I just kind of run across them. Run it right. But for this is, I think this is the first time where I have titles that I'm actively really, really. looking out for now. How often do you watch um the game showcases? I don't. You know, because see, I think that's I from that may, Yeah, that may be the thing. Like to see what you're watching the whole full one, and then you seeing everything that they're work, working on. Mm-hmm. You go, well, I like this. I like this. I don't like that. No, nah, that's too dark. Oh, I like this. You know, so that's kind of. I like there, those. Where they, there are some of these games that I must say. It was kind of giving PS3 graphics, and I'm just kind of confused. So. That's just the um the uprise of the indie develop. Well, it's two things actually. It's the uprise of the indie developer mm-hmm. because you know they're trying to get more advanced. But on the flip side, going back to our video we made a top five systems of all time. The reason why PlayStation Three is my favorite is I feel like if you put a game a PS3 game in today and play it, you'll be like. Damn, this is PS3. Like those graphics are really, really strong, really good, and they hold up. You know, so the PlayStation 3's um style of graphic is really it's still good today. Now it's not like to where you can probably see the gray hair on this side. You, you know, you'll get that on PS5, but just kind of like just a standard set of graphics to where we understand this is still a game as opposed to actual photorealism. Yeah. I think PS3 is still good. So yeah, you're probably looking at those indie games. Okay. Maybe that's what that was then. Mm-hmm. Mm. But, I was really yeah. surprised to see that we're at Final Fantasy 16 now. I'm shocked that there's that many. That's cr- well, so I found out that Final Fantasy, the first one released in 1987. Oh, uh, because so, because you remember the Final Fantasy that took off was on PlayStation One. Yeah, that was seven, already right? that was yeah, that was already at seven. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of a thing. It's just it was a PC game at first. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, because I was like, uh, I was talking to a friend, and I was like, well, you know, was, I thought that Final. Fantasy was kind of like derived from Zelda, which it possibly could have been inspired by because Zelda released in 86. Mm. And um, Final Fantasy is like right in 87, but it was just a PC game because Cloud reminds me of Link. I could see that, yeah. Like it's Link, it could be Link's cousin or something. <laughs> <laughs> but um, He's yeah, pretty- so, yeah, they, they've been around. Mm-hmm. I haven't played any, especially of the new ones. You you I haven't dabbled with Final Fantasy girl, but I just couldn't figure out the battle system, so I just gave up. Oh yeah, I told I, I think my my long term story is the I played that demo and got to that boss fight, fought that guy. My character went over there and hit him, and then I had to wait on him to hit me. Then that second hit, they went over there and missed, and he hit somebody else and knocked him out the fight I said nope <laughs> nope <laughs> sweet so um let me see so that so with you you say you're playing like the Disney game like that's it you're not bouncing off anything else or no I kind of want to get back to my Chrono Cross game um, okay and I really want to play Persona 4, and we have it on the computer, but I don't know how to play it on the keyboard. Like, I couldn't get the character to move very well, so I have to have Danny show me how to hook up the PlayStation controller to the computer so I could play properly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting a Steam Deck. I'm, he yeah, has I think one. He really likes he does. it. Does he play it a lot, or...? It's, Does I he think have... it takes a while to charge, though. Okay. Well, see, because me, I'll be playing a lot in the house. Because mm-hmm. I'm mostly, if I'm out, for me personally, when I'm out the house, I'm going to be doing something interactive to where 
like I'm not going to need. I mean, of course, you know, you got your tire changes, your some kind of meeting where you may be waiting. Yeah. But for the most part, yeah. For that part, you know, I got my vote fold. So now I, I game on my phone. So I think that would be a better choice if you're out, though, because the Steam Deck is it's big. It's really, yeah. yeah. Really, really. I've seen that it's like really big to the point to where you're you can you have to cradle hold it as opposed to like just yeah so but yeah i just want access to the uh the steam library because yeah. you know there's a lot of stuff that does not come to console mm -hmm. that's on uh and uh, <laughs> i hate to say it but i was asking a guy maybe in about 2018 i was asked as a console i've been playing consoles my entire life so i don't necessarily have any idea of how to get into pc gaming so i asked him i'm like you know what's like the best entry point from a person who's played console to get into pc gaming because i don't know where it starts and stops and everyone talks about it being so great and it's better than i'm like bro what to buy yeah but, well of course you can just go buy a pc but i'm like i don't want to get this and then it's like oh here's this game that comes out and i can't play it because of the graphics card or i don't have the right this or the right that and that shit almost turned into a physical altercation Oh, the PC like, gamers are different, though. They're very yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, you like talking about I don't think you're being straight up. I'm like, how am I not being straight up? I'm, I'm coming and asking. I don't know what to ask. I'm just saying how, what to start with, what all, what's the basic. So, yeah, I said when they came out with the Steam Deck, I said, cool, here's something that I can buy and I don't have to fight with nobody about how to get into the shit. <laughs> So. Yeah, for sure. I just can't figure out like the hand things on like when you're making the character move and you use the arrow keys. And then I think there was oh, also yeah. like W or A, something, something like that. And I just can't when you have to make the character move diagonally. You should be able to. Should, and if not, you should be able to customize it because I hear that's a thing, a major thing with PC gaming, like being fully customizable if you want to move with the arrows or if you want to move with the letter keys. Mm -hmm. I, hear, I hear that that's you know part of why PC gaming is so great. I wouldn't mind becoming a PC gamer one day, but I just need to... I, I don't have that software downloaded yet in my brain. I, I'm right. going to need to... <laughs> that's why I said, yeah. I'm going to do a Steam Deck and then... Because the game I want to play is called Fears to Fathom. And it's about these. Sounds familiar. It's about these uh, situations. It's, it's three episodes. And it's about these. They're real life situations. And the guy has like a headline that says, hey, if you have a. um, What did how did he word it? I ain't going to say it was a life. What could potential. He doesn't word it like it's a life threatening. It's just have you have a crazy situation happen that you kind of survive and you look back on like. Wow, he's like email me here and we'll turn it into a game. So <laughs> for, we'll play out your pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, we'll monetize yeah, like your we, trauma. <laughs> we're gonna make a video game out of your most traumatizing moment, <laughs> <laughs> and you get to play this shit over. And over. You get to relive it over and over. <laughs> right, but you know, I think it's pretty cool because, like, from a perspective of. Because for me, as an as a the way I get immersed in stuff is when I know that, like, if I'm watching a movie and it says based on true events, um, even if it's not like, I know it's gonna have a dramatization, but I'm a little bit more invested when I know that it's something that actually happened. Uh -huh. So playing a game and then thinking like, damn, this really happened to somebody. But the first one was a. a the first episode was about a kid. I believe he was 15 years old. His parents had to make an out of town trip, business trip, and they were they were well off people. They let his mom left him some uh, lasagna in the stove. Yes, I've like, watched people play that. Yeah, and then it was like the dude. It was a guy who actually broke into the house. Yeah, and he was in the house somewhere, and you have to hide from him until. Yeah, that, so that was Ooh. one. Then two was a um, it was this girl. She drove to this gaming convention that was like ten hours away, and I'm like, what kind of parents let like a she's like nineteen and they let her drive ten hours away in a vehicle by herself? 
to a gaming convention, no less. Yeah. I mean, but I'd have went. Well, I don't know. I, you know, I come from our community is a little bit different. Nobody's letting you drive. <laughs> Driving an hour away. <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah, 10 hours away, one way, and then 10 hours back. Mm-hmm. But in a way, you have to end up stopping at a gas station because you're low on gas. Somebody sabotages the car, and then you're driving, and the car stalls out. Somebody, you have to get a hitchhike ride to a uh, um, hotel. I didn't know that and, was one of that series. Yeah, and the hotel is like this crazy, some kind of occult type shit because the dude that somebody somebody um slipped something in a drink from it was a coffee machine you go get some coffee something is in your drink there was a guy snuck into your room while you were to go get the coffee and he was making noise apparently while you were asleep the manager comes over knocks on the door and then He's he was like, I told you about making noise. He's like, I got something from the coffee machine. He's like, show me this coffee machine. You go over there, the coffee machine's not there, and that's when the guy sneaks out. It's like, it's like it's really, really throw, mm-hmm. you know, that. And then that third one is uh the one who has the crazy ex that's haunting, that's stalking him. It's called uh, is it Carson's? I think it's Carson's story. Yeah, he has a crazy ex-girlfriend that won't leave him alone. He was house-sitting for uh, a, a, a major business guy who was going through a bad breakup so or a divorce. So you spend the game thinking that the, the estranged wife was coming back, but it's actually your character's ex-girlfriend that doesn't want to let go. Mm-hmm. And she follows you to the store. It, it's like... <laughs> I don't think I've seen it. It is legit like that. That's like my favorite thing to watch right now. I've watched so many different people play the same episodes just to see their reactions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I can't yeah. play those kind of games. This shit stresses me out. I don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, like, you can't go to like that. What is it called? Like uh, suspense movies? Oh, yeah. oh you you I can't like watch. To be suspense. Yeah, you'll go you'll go to sleep and wake up and you're in the you're in the game like damn I heard <laughs> something didn't sound right in the kitchen. No, because I need to know that everything's gonna be at the okay at the end and sometimes it's not. And so I just right. like when they're like, Oh, it has you sitting on the edge of your seat. I don't like <laughs> that. <That's laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know, that's you know, also for me that's like the excitement part. It's like, damn, is it is it no or something or is it not? I don't like it. You know what's funny? What's funny? I just told told somebody. I'm like, you know, I'm so I'm so jaded in life that stuff like that is it, it's exciting because it gives me something to feel. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> it's like, oh, that 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 little moment of uncertainty. It's like, what was that? No. Just go see what it is. No. <laughs> but yeah. So um, let's see. That Steam Deck. Mm, yeah, I don't know if um the only thing I noticed coming this year, they gave the dates on the Assassin's Creed and the uh Alan Wake for at least for the ones I'm excited about. Uh they showed a lot of gameplay for the Spider Man and it looks like it could come this year, but they may push it in the next. You know what? You're right. I think half of the games, at least or over half, are coming out in 2024. Are the ones that I'm interested. The ones, in. the ones it right. Yeah, it, you know those state of plays. Um, they'll usually have one that just kind of shows what we're working on, and then when you're getting really, really close to a release, they'll take a state of play that'll be focused on one game, and they'll just kind of give you a real deep dive, like right before it hits. They did it with Final Fantasy. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe they did it with Hogwarts before that hit. Oh, is that what that was? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. So I then is that what they did for Spider-Man then? Is, are they about ready for that one? That, that's what makes me think that it could still drop. The, they may not be certain on a date, but they showed a really long gameplay piece. At least 15 so, minutes. No, not 15 minutes. Maybe it's probably, it's about, I believe eight, 8 to 10. Okay. So... They're probably trying to figure out if they want to do September, October. Well, October, November, or December. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. that's probably what that's going to be. Maybe when we get later, because they do them all throughout the year. Yeah. So with this, they always do a major one in June because it kind of re replaces each. I noticed that they do them. It's going to be one somewhere in January, February, definitely one in June. And then the other one is probably October, November. So they try to do at least they have more sometimes, but for sure, like that January, February, and then that June period. And then uh, in the year type gotcha but yeah let me see we're not running out of time are we? 10 minutes left 10 minutes okay sweet uh outside let me see yeah man what do you so you didn't hear nothing about the alan wake being digital only i can't remember what game that was it's the scary one that I know for a fact that you'd never play, even if somebody gave it to you for free. <laughs> well, that's why I'm not a, I'm not a right. in that game. But yeah, but so the the the, the dev, they they said something that was interesting though, because they're like, with us being able to release the game without a hard copy, we can keep it at the the forty nine fifty nine price point, because you know these games are sixty nine ninety nine now. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of, you know, of course, all the money that went into the development of the game and then pressing up hard copies, um, the actual artwork, packaging and shipping. Mm -hmm. So I'm like the trade off of digital only because the reason I'm talking about it, we're looking, we're looking at the future. Somebody's going to say, hey, yeah, it's cheaper to just put it out digitally. Let's not press up hard copies because me going to these targets and Walmarts now, you go to the game section and they're blowing the fuck out. Really? Oh um, yeah, it's like I went in the Target and it's like they got a whole wall that was let's just say as an estimate that a whole like twenty five games and there's only six titles there and everything else is just empty. Mm. And so it's like it's almost as if they're not buying more uh, inventory in the gaming space. But even though digital sales are up a lot, it's just something as a physical gamer, as a physical collector, and understanding how contracts can change so many things. It's like, like I said, what ended up happening with Alan Wake specifically, um, there was a, a band, musicians who played music, and they got into some sort of contract just being like, hey, you can't play your our music in your game. So they had to strip uh, Alan Wake out of the digital storefronts. So maybe, of course, they got their straightened out and then they were able to re-release it. But that's the thing about a digital copy. If somebody decides, hey, this right here, you didn't pay me enough for it, they have to take it out. And if that's the case, I, I wonder if these, if they take it out of the digital stores, and let's just say the way we have to manage our space, that was the one game you had to erase to make room for your new game. But you wanted to be able to have it back. You just redownload. It's like if they take it down, you can't fucking redownload it, yeah. which is why I feel like having that physical copy is like, well, even if they took it out the store, I have the disc. So that's why it's always a concern for me. Mm -hmm. But like, what do you think about that in terms of making it cheaper, or being able to keep the price cheaper, or because I don't know, are you you may not care about having the physical copies. Um, I like having the physical copies if it's a series that I'm actively collecting, like Kingdom Hearts or something. Something you're something you're passionate about, huh? Um, but if it's just a passive game where I'm like, oh, this looks really cool, and I'm gonna check it out, then I don't mind buying right. it digitally. So I guess I guess I see their argument of keeping it cheaper. But if it's only cheaper by about ten dollars, then that's not right. exactly what's making the difference for people right. who want the game. Right, yeah. You know, if we're talking about the driver, you're gonna drop the price to thirty five ninety nine. So you know what? Right. I might be on board with this. This <laughs> choice because gamers, if they want the game, they're gonna pay the price for whatever it is. Right, because um, these what you call this sell out of these big box sets, like the two hundred and fifty dollar right. boxes, like for the 
of course, for certain games, like you got your Spider Man, your God of Wars, your Assassin's Creed, anything that's just like super popular, mm-hmm. yeah, that that two hundred dollar uh, box is gonna sell. Especially so, since it comes with perks, where they'll be like, you get X amount of skins. X amount of this you skins. Start out with you, this got this, you got this st- statue here. You got this art book. You got the collector cards here. Yeah. Plus, yeah, and then you got the game that'll play on both consoles and the steel book. So, but yeah. I don't know. Sweet. But yeah, I guess we can go ahead and close it on that one. All right. Yeah. I am kind of scared of with all digital future, but you can't really. <laughs> you see where we see where movies are, and we've seen it with CDs too. Because I can't yeah. tell you the last time I bought a CD. Yeah, um, I don't think you can go in stores and buy CDs anymore. Yeah, I don't. The think... next time I'm there, I'm gonna go to the CD section and see what it's looking like. Yeah, the CD section is now the pop figure collection section because <laughs> you know a lot of stores are selling pop figures now because the the collector piece and the, the, the nerd Funko co- Pops? Funko, yeah oh i don't like them you don't like Funkos? no i don't like think them i would because they almost look like that but i just don't mm-hmm. Funko pops yeah. are not my thing some of them are some of them are good and some of them are creepy because like the black eyes and they're just kind of standing there with their dead stare, like maybe that's it. <laughs> right. It's like, maybe it's the face that me takes me out of it. <laughs> you said you're looking at me like you're dead. <laughs> you're looking like you want to start something. <laughs> I want to be starting something. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's uh that's gonna be it for today. Uh you guys watch playing anything or excited about anything, let's talk about it in the comments. And if you want to play any of the cute games and have my back on this one, let me know in the comments. Yeah, let's see. But until next time, the next two weeks. Bye.